watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Didn't see you there. Welcome to the November episode of Healthy Germantown TV. I'm your host, Will Kastner. This month, we're gonna take a look at how you can take a healthy approach to your Thanksgiving meal. We're also gonna get an inside scoop on how the Germantown Fire Department stays healthy. But you don't have to take my word for it. We're here with Jeff Beeman, Assistant Fire Chief for the City of Germantown to talk about the brand new health and wellness initiative that the fire department is rolling out. Jeff, thanks for letting us stop by today. Oh, thank you very much. So tell us a little bit about this health and wellness initiative that you're well, starting. Well, this is something that's been in the works now for about three years, and mm -hmm. it started with an assistance to firefighters grant we received from FEMA about two years ago. We received uh, uh, a good amount of uh, weight equipment mm -hmm. and cardiovascular equipment that we distributed all four fire stations and we got the ability to send seven of our people off to peer fitness trainer school and through that school they become certified as ace peer fitness trainers so we're utilizing that resource to help our personnel across the department to figure out you know how they want to be uh, stronger do they want to have more endurance they do want to get leaner or do they want to put some muscle mass on so that these personnel can help everybody figure out what how to get to their personal goals that's great. So you, you actually have staff that do the personal training for the firefighters. We do. We do. That's why we send them off that class. Yeah. And so the initiative really is kind of geared towards the individual, not the group as far as what's needed, what's not needed. Well, that's really the focus of the program. It's designed for the individual. And we really call it the do something campaign. Mm -hmm. If you're already doing something, do something to be better. If you're not doing anything, start doing something. If it's just walking on the treadmill for 20 minutes a shift or you know 30 minutes a shift, start doing something because the healthier you are, uh, the happier you are as an employee, the more productive you are. And as some have said, the happier retirement you'll have later in your career also. Definitely. So you know, health and wellness plays a big part into our daily lives. How does it really impact your career as a firefighter? Well, in the fire service, physical fitness is one of the primary things that we've realized probably in the past 20 years, it has become a major focus. It's so physically demanding to suppress a structure fire, or even when you have to handle uh, patient care, when you're having to lift and move a patient that's on the third floor of an apartment complex and carry them down three flights of stairs to the ambulance waiting below. If you're not in good shape, you're not gonna be uh, helpful to your fire company or your ambulance. You're you might even be a hindrance to the process. Yeah, so within the fire department, are there things that you do to monitor physical fitness or wellness to kind of push each other to be better? Well, we're like most departments, we have an onboarding physical ability test. Mm -hmm. But unlike other departments, we administer that test every year to make sure annually that you meet the department's minimum physical fitness requirements. So everyone from the fire chief to the newest firefighter takes that test every year. Yeah, so do you ever race? What's that? Do you ever race? Uh, there are competitions that are out there. Uh, you'll hear about it afterwards where people will set new records. Well, that's good. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the test. What are some of the things involved as far well, as what do a, you do? It's a 10 station test uh, for new employees or uh, new hires. You have 10 minutes to complete the test and for existing personnel, you have 12 right now. Uh, there are several stations from climbing stairs, carrying 100 feet of an inch and three quarter hose over your shoulder, to crawling around, to dragging a 175 pound dummy 75 feet around a cone and back to the starting location, slinging a sledgehammer 35 times, or, or just carrying 100 pounds of equipment, you know, down and around a cone and back for 100 feet. It's every task that we do, though, simulates something that you would do at an emergency scene. Yeah, so everything you do physically is really practical at the same time. Yes, it is. It's all applicable to your job and what you do. Mm -hmm. So w with your career, personally, what motivates you to be physically fit? Uh, one thing is just, I don't like being sick. I yeah. like to be healthy. Uh, another thing is, if I'm gonna ask people to do something, I better be somewhat in shape myself also. Mm -hmm. 
And then the third thing, like that's a role model, not only here, but at home. And then uh, because I know what it takes to get the job done as far as fire suppression, patient care, technical rescue, or even hazmat response, if you're not in decent physical or good physical shape, you could be a part of the problem versus part of the solution. Yeah, and so has there ever been a time in your career where you really thought, man, I'm glad I'm in good shape right now? Well, really any structure fire you fight, uh, any technical rescue event, we could even go back way back to 94 during the ice storm when you're on duty 30 plus hours, you're making call after call after call, having to do physical labor or fighting multiple structure fires during that same time period. If you didn't have a level of physical fitness to rely on, we would not have been able to perform like we did during that event. Yeah, and so all that, it's awesome that you work that hard and are passionate about your career and it's motivating, I think, for us to hear. It's awesome to see you know, how motivated you are to do a good job. We're coming up on the holiday season, everybody's eating turkey and grandma's pecan pie. What are some things that you do to stay healthy in the season where health is really kind of in the back about? of your mind? Yeah. Well, moderation, definitely gotta be moderation. Now, as far as grandma's pecan pie, I'm gonna splurge. <laughs> can't beat that. <laughs> I can't beat that, I'm gonna splurge on pecan pie. Yeah. But it's gonna be moderation and, and exercise. Mm -hmm. You just can't forget about, it's, you, know, you still have your physical fitness regimen. Even though it's the holidays, you can't take a break from that or those extra, the extra food, the, uh, the cookies, the turkey, the cranberry sauce, the dressing, it'll all catch up to you. Oh yeah, and you gotta ask yourself, do I really need all this? Well, you just eat it and enjoy it, but in moderation. Right, mm -hmm. so last but not least, are there any exercise tips or things that you've learned along the way in your long career here that help push you to do better or you found are just really beneficial? Exercise tips, once stretch. Mm -hmm. Stretch, stretch, and stretch some more. I learned the hard way about not stretching enough with some injuries. So I've, I've learned that. And then uh, you have to kind of really set your own goals and know where you want to go. And if you're not sure where you're going to go, you're going to kind of flounder around and really not have a, a, a solid goal. Yeah. So I, I've learned to set those goals. And my, my goal right now is, is um, I can bench press my body weight three times, but I want to be able to do it 12 times with ease. That's what I'm working on now. Yeah. So I, I've set that goal, and that's what I'm working towards also. You got to know where you're going. Mm -hmm. well, good deal. Thanks for letting us come by today. It's been great to be with you. Uh, you're more than welcome. When we come back, we're going back to school with Gail to talk about healthy tips for your Thanksgiving dinner. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back to Healthy Germantown. We're here with Gail Chernitz, owner of Galena's Cucina and founder of Gail's Pizza Parties. Gail, thanks for stopping by today. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Yeah, so you're a little bit of a celebrity. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So what <laughs> yeah. are some shows that you've been on? Uh, well, I've been on a show called Ultimate Recipe Showdown, uh, hosted by Guy Fieri, and that was on um, Food Network. And I also do quite a few cooking demos for Live at Nine. Wow, and you, you do pizza parties? I do, yes. I recently retired, 
and I started doing my own pizza parties, which is an in-home uh, party. I come to your house, I make the dough three yeah. days in advance, yeah. and I come into your house and you pick the pizzas, how many you want or what you like on them, and then I bring everything and I make the pies in your oven, and then I clean everything up and then I leave. So that sounds awesome. I'm like an in-home catering pizza party. Hmm. Um, my pizzas are award-winning. I've been, I, I've, I'm known in Germantown for my pizzas, so uh, it's right in my address. alley. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So. We'll have to save the pizza conversation for another show. Today, we want to talk about Thanksgiving. How do we get through the Thanksgiving meal without just completely overdoing it? You know, when you see the things like sweet potato casserole with the marshmallows on top, what are some things that we could do to maybe push towards a healthier type of Thanksgiving meal? Well, that's a really good question, and there's really a lot of ways that you can do that. Uh, for one is, kind of change up what you're making for the holidays. Instead of doing the traditional sweet potato casserole with all those disgusting marshmallows on top. <laughs> Sorry, not my deal. Um, you know, you could choose to do a healthier mm -hmm. oven roasted vegetables, yeah. which are very colorful, they're heart healthy, um, and it just takes a little prep time, slicing and dicing, but right. I'm gonna show you how to make that a but little bit easier it. today. All right. It's well worth it, and this way, while you're cooking your, your turkey, uh, or once it comes out of the oven, because you wanna let it rest for a good 30 to 45 minutes mm -hmm. before you carve into it, you can put your vegetables into the oven and uh, by the time your turkey is ready to carve your oven roasted vegetables are also ready so, to be eaten. Sounds like you've got it figured out. I do, <laughs> yeah that's what I do. Sounds good. So what I love about this time of the year is the root vegetables. In mm -hmm. the summertime people tend to go closer towards a yellow squash and zucchini and eggplant but at this time of the year we are thinking more comfort uh, root vegetables like leeks and yep. um, Brussels sprouts and butternut squash and yeah. leftover tomatoes because tomato season is coming to an end. Unfortunately. And um, so I like combining different vegetables right. and getting the flavor and the vitamins and the nutritional aspect of the different vegetables. Mm -hmm. I was a fitness instructor for almost 30 years really? before I also retired. And um, so for being healthy and eating healthy, and working out has always been a part of our family's um, well-being. Yeah. So, and I'm happy to be here and kind of show some tips to your viewers today of what they can do to be a little bit healthier for the holiday. One thing I do want to say is don't buy that butterball turkey. Go to, <laughs> go to the store and get a good organic um, turkey. It makes such a big difference. It's not pumped up with all kinds of hormones right. and it's so much more flavorful than butterball or anything else. Yeah. So yeah. go organic, order for fresh market, go big or go home. Right. Okay? You know? <laughs> or, do, or just so, eat pizza. <laughs> oh, well, I've done that for holidays too, but not Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving is traditional. Turkey only. Turkey only. All right. Yeah, with side let's, dishes. Let's talk veggies. Okay, so we're going to do what I call little knife skills today right. because. Keep your the, fingers. Absolutely, and I'm going to show you how to do that. <laughs> um, I want to make people's lives easier, mm -hmm. and most people have not been taught the correct way to hold a knife. Right. So most people, when they pick up a knife they hold it like this mm -hmm. or my favorite is they hold it like this. Yeah, I think that's how I do it. Oh no. <laughs> and when I used to teach cooking classes for, Vi for Viking I would always do this when I'd see my so students you know to get rid of that. But the correct way to hold a knife is you're going to take your hand out and I should probably have you do this but you're going to put your trigger finger here right. and your thumb here and then you're going to wrap those three <laughs> fingers around your knife and this gives you a lot more control mm -hmm. over your knife. Um, this hand what you're going to do is you're going to make a knuckle right. and you're going to actually put that blade right alongside of your knuckles and or make a fist and this, you're going to do this type kind of, of a rock, rock and butt. roll motion, yeah. yeah. And this is an easier way and a much better way. Your knife skills will come up 100%. Um, so try to do this at home. It's going to feel a little goofy at first, but the more that you actually use this method for cutting, the quicker and more proficient you'll be in your cutting skills. So today what we're going to do is um, my oven roasted vegetables is a combination mm -hmm. of our butternut squash Brussels sprouts, yep. which people 
They are so good people. They get a bad rap. Though. They do get a bad rap. You know, it's I think because when moms used to make these vegetables, <laughs> they boil the crap out of them. Yep. And you know, and they were so bland and they had no flavor. So we need to add flavor to our vegetables and let them bake. When you bake or oven roast a vegetable, you're not losing all the nutrition. If you were to boil a vegetable, mm -hmm. all your vitamins are gone. It's gone. So it's like using canned vegetables. Like why bother? Mm -hmm. All right. So. Over here we have some really nice Brussels sprouts and what I like to do is just cut off the bottom part of that Brussels sprout and then I'm just going to take my knife and cut that Brussels sprout in half. So I'm going to put my sprouts, I'm going to do all of this, do that, put that into my bowl. Right. Um, this is our butternut squash and the butternut squash what I've done is I peeled the butternut squash and what I'm going to do is just take my spoon and I'm going to do this over the sink and get all, get those, all out there. Yeah, get those seeds out of there. Okay, so you look like this. So then what I'm going to do is I've already cut off the top part of my butternut squash mm -hmm. and I'm going to cut off the bottom. And you'll notice that my butternut squash is in half. Whenever right. you have a vegetable that's in a circle, you always want to cut it in half mm. and make sure that the half is on a flat surface. This will prevent your vegetables from rolling around on you. That's, I hate when that happens, when my vegetables roll around. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife the way I showed you, and I'm going to make about half inch slices all the way down. And then I'm going to go back, escape oh, away from me. and cut those vegetables into pieces. And then I'm just going to add those to my bowl of vegetables. The mix. Right, the mix. That'll so work. That's our butternut squash. Mm -hmm. Now this, this is another now, what vegetable. Is that? Yeah, what the heck? This is a leek. Hmm. Okay, and leeks are really very, very tasty when you roast them. Uh, unlike an onion, they hold their texture up a lot better, right. and the flavor is very similar to an onion and a scallion. Okay. Um, so when you purchase your leeks, you bring them home, you want to cut off the bottom part of your leek, and also cut off about you know, this much at the top. Don't need that. And once I, as I said before, remember mm -hmm. this said so this is wash a round, right? Yeah. And of course you're going to wash your vegetables. And then I'm going to cut my vegetables in half so that I have my flat surface. And then, once again, just go ahead and dice those vegetables up and put them in my bowl. Now, I like to add, um, extra virgin olive oil to my vegetables. So this recipe calls for a whole butternut squash, calls for some cherry tomatoes, also two leeks and some Brussels sprouts. And what I've done is I've put some vegetable oil in my vegetable oil or mazzola extra virgin olive oil, you could do either, and toss it with a spice called garlic and herb. But you can really do any kind of a spice. Yeah. You know, whatever, kind of whatever you have in your case. Yeah. yeah. You could do salt and pepper. You can mm -hmm. add a little bit of, of thyme or fresh thyme if you have the time. Yeah. Uh, good one. <laughs> uh, and just toss it all together and then you just put it on a baking sheet and you roast them for about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. as I said earlier. While you're waiting and on that turkey. While you're waiting on that turkey yep. to rest. And then you have this wonderful tray of oven roasted vegetables. Which is just magical. Which is, mm. and very, very flavorful. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have leftover vegetables, I'm gonna show you in a little while what to do with those. All right, looking forward okay. to it. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size.
are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. We're back in the kitchen to talk about what to do when the family's gone, the football game's over, and you got 55 pounds of leftover turkey. Do you throw it away? Do you put it in the freezer, never to be seen again? No, there's or so many things could you can there be do. Something else? Yeah. The first thing I do is when I'm cleaning up at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I just get a big pot and I break up my carcasses. And I say now, what do you mean by carcass? I, because, <laughs> all right, because uh, we do a fried turkey. Oh. Uh, sorry, oh. but we also do the traditional turkey. Okay, good, That's good, my good. son has got to do a fried turkey. That's his deal. So whatever makes the kids happy. Right. Um, so I'll break up the the leftovers where mm -hmm. I break the, the legs off and the gotcha. wings. So it's called the carcass. Okay. And then, you know, the body, mm -hmm. all the bones and the meat. And um, I'll pull off as much meat as I can. Right. And, or if I don't want to do it then, I'll just put everything in a big pot, cover it, put it in the refrigerator Save so that the next day when everybody's sitting around watching football and I don't like who's on TV, um, then I'll go back in the kitchen and, yeah. I'll, and I'll start breaking up that carcass. I'll mm -hmm. start pulling the meat off. Um, and then what I'll do with my bones, I'll put them in that pot, cover it with about, an, uh, about two or three inches of water once mm -hmm. the bones are covered and let it simmer for about right. 45 minutes. So we bring it up to a boil. Simmer is a slow boil, mm -hmm. little bubbles. Almost a boil. Almost a boil. And um, I add a mirepoix. Now what is that? Oh, that's French. Mm. Sounds good, huh? <laughs> sounds delicious. Mirepoix is basics for soup. It's equal parts of onions, carrots, and celery. Mm -hmm. And I chop them up coarsely so they don't have to be diced or minced. You just chop just them up. Chop. Throw those in with your water and your bones, mm -hmm. and you that's making stock. Yeah. Now, what's the difference between broth and stock? Good question. Stock means that the broth or the the the, the broth or the vegetable, mm -hmm. whatever, comes from bones. Okay. And where a broth comes from just the skin. So whenever you're buying chicken soup or chicken broth or chicken stock in the refrigerator, you know, at the grocery store, right. you always want to go with the stock. Got it. So from the bones. So then I just let it boil and simmer down for about 45 minutes. I let it cool down, pull off all the meat, mm -hmm. um, and then that's the basic for my soup. Mm. I drain it so I get rid of all those vegetables that are have been added flavor to my stock. And um, and then, now here comes the easy part. Mm, I like so easy. remember we talked about those leftover vegetables that we you did. had? We did. You can add them to your Put them turkey in the soup. soup. Mm. So today I'm actually using some mixed vegetables and I'm just gonna add mixed frozen. Um, if possible, you always want to try to use fresh, but you know, frozen is going to be your next okay. bet, not canned, all right? You want to stay away from canned. It's loaded with sodium, mm. um, although they do have some low-fat sodium. Yeah. Now, how do I turn my soup into something that's a little bit healthier than the traditional soup? I love beans. Beans, beans are good for your heart. We won't finish that. We won't? Okay. <laughs> what were you thinking? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Now you can use whatever kind of beans that you like. I happen to be big on cannellini beans, so I'm going to add some beans. There now you. here I've got a couple of cups of my leftover turkey meat. There it is. It's already chopped and diced, and my dogs love it when I yep. cut up the turkey because they always get you get know the skin pieces. and the yep. stuff that I don't like. And I'm just going to add my turkey meat to my soup. And we're going to let that cook up for a few minutes. And the beans will help add a little thickening mm -hmm. to it. But if you look at it, it's very hearty. Oh, it's yeah. also healthy. And it makes for a great dinner. Um, so we're going to let that simmer for a bit. Let's do it. The other thing I like to make, and I'm just going to pull this out right now for your viewers All at right. home. <laughs> this is my healthy version mm. of a turkey pot pie. Turkey pot pie, comfort food all the way, all right? Day. So how do we make this a little healthier? What I did with this is I took a cup of milk mm -hmm. and I added a tablespoon of cornstarch as my thickener and just whisked it, right. put it over the stove and let it simmer. Let it 
simmer for about a minute once it came up to that low boil mm -hmm. and removed it from the stove. Now my little shortcut is I take that pan and put it in the refrigerator to cool it down quickly. Okay. Meanwhile, I take the same vegetables that I used for the soup, mm -hmm. put them in a big bowl, a couple of cups of leftover turkey, uh, and beans again. Gotta have the beans. So I'm trying to put a healthier kick on it. Instead of adding the potatoes that people typically use in a turkey pot pie, mm -hmm. I'm adding the beans. And once again, it could be black beans, cannellini pinto beans, beans, pinto beans. Yeah. It could be whatever you want. Um, and then I went back to the refrigerator, mm -hmm. pulled out that cool down um, mix that I made, and then mix, tossed everything together with a little bit of poultry seasoning and a little bit of salt and pepper, white, white pepper, and that's all and that's, that's it. in it. Now I cheat because people like fast, so they're not going to make homemade crust. So right. I bought the deep dish pie crust, mm -hmm. let it come to room temperature, and then I put it in a pan so now it looks like I made the crust. The I don't think thing. I've ever seen store-bought crust look that good. I know, right? But it is, <laughs> okay? It's I amazing. swear. <laughs> it's, so then I just did a little egg wash on the bottom. I folded it out, put it in here, put a little egg wash, which yeah. is egg and a little bit of water, mix it all up, mm -hmm. and then brush it on the bottom. And that's to kind of like coat it so right. that my young yumminess of the goodiness doesn't come through that crust and the mm -hmm. crust still stays a little crunchy. And then I just took the top part and, you know, rolled it out a little bit and wow. then, you know, loaded up with my stuff and that's it. It's and then baked it. I know, doesn't that look pretty? So um, the top all I did was score it and let's cut into this. This will, this takes about 45 minutes to bake. Mm -hmm. And once again, this is a very healthy meal. You could have this with soup. Uh, I am a lover of fresh salads in my home, so we have Do salads well. a lot. So this and a salad would be the perfect meal. Now let's see if I'm really good at it. won't fall apart. All right, not bad. All right, but you take That's a look great. inside. You've got your vegetables, which are nice and healthy, and our soup is pretty much ready. So we're gonna add that soup. Once again, colors. You want it whenever you're making healthy things at home, you want to try to get as many colors into your food as possible. Yeah. We eat with our eyes. So when something looks really good and really colorful, just like our roasted vegetables, we're more inclined to go towards that food. Yeah. Now if we had those leftover of roasted vegetables, you could add it in there. The other thing that I do when I make my stock, I like to let it sit in the refrigerator for about a half hour before, and any of the turkey fat that has cooked will come to the top, yep. and then I just take a spoon and I take skim remove it. Off, it. So yeah. I skim it off, making it a little bit healthier. That's so, great. Happy Thanksgiving well, this Day. This looks good. Yes. Thanks for stopping by. You're welcome, and thank you so much for having me here today. It was my pleasure. You're welcome. It was welcome. a pleasure meeting everybody, and I look forward to coming back and maybe doing some pizzas. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely have you back. All right. <laughs> well, that's all for this episode of Healthy Germantown. If you'd like to know more about this show or any other show, check out gmtvonline.org. Stay healthy, G-Town. <laughs>